uh, the number one ranked player by Rankings HQ. We had uh, Doug Johnson playing. Yeah, but he wasn't playing seriously this time. He was trying to squig everybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, he, he was coming just, in with a very themed list. So, But it was fun, though. Yeah, just making a point of uh, you know the quality of players we had here. Even if they're running forward trying to use Zogwart to turn Eldrad into a squig, they're going to do it smart. We, yeah. we also did the uh, we had a squid counter too, where there was a prize, a separate prize for that. Yeah, it was Which to see how many independent characters Doug would actually turn into a squig, and there was a poll going, and then I believe it was who won two, two. two. Yeah. Da- it was Dallas. actually yes, our friend yes. Dallas. Uh, he plays <laughs> Blood Angels. Was able to correct the exact amount of guys that Zogwart would turn into a squig, and I believe he won like twenty something dollars. Yeah, twenty four dollars. So, yeah, so much props to uh, much props to Dallas. Yeah, and I missed that. that guess by one because I only bet he could do it with. She, I bet he could only do one character, and then <laughs> our space will player let it, let me down. Fail. All right, so going down the list. So anything else, you guys? That, yeah, how do you guys? Uh, I wasn't there, but how do you guys think the tournament was run in like a mechanical sense, where the rounds all started on time? How did everything go? How did uh? How did Dave Fay do running everything? Uh, I didn't have any problem with it, but he he was a little lax about the time. Um, on the Dice first day, down. anyway. Yeah, and it it was ran fairly well. And um, what what really kind of got me, because the first day was supposed to be four games, so a lot of people had their mindset of four games. And after the second game, he he made it three. So I don't I don't know about other people, but for me, that kind of changed my mindset because I was prepared to do the four in one day. And then had you your rock star it. ready, I, dude. I had well, like three rock stars that day. I was ready to go. I could have run a marathon. I think that has to do with what you were just saying about the uh, time thing. No one likes it when their game gets cut short because of time. So maybe he mm-hmm. tried to split it into days of three and three, so everybody could finish <clears> playing their games, and no one would have to end on like turn four or something ridiculous. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, which I, I mean, did on the last day. <laughs> yeah, I mean, respect to Dave for holding the tournament. But I believe this is his first like major GT that he ran. Um, I knew he used to do a couple like side tournaments here and there, like mini RTTs or normal RTTs. But I believe with this one being the first GT, I mean it's kind of like your guinea pig. You're kind of uh, feeling your tendrils out there to see how everything is going. So <laughs> test the water a little bit. Test the water and stuff like that. But I think if he runs another one, it'll definitely be more time managed. I mean he was really organized from the get go. Um, everything was out there ready for us to go. I just think coming in, I think he was a little bit ambitious with the time allowance for everybody. So, um, I mean, at least next time if he does run another GT, I think it'll be even more organized than it was right now. Do you guys think 15 minutes was enough time to uh, a transition between one round into the next? Oh, yeah. That was no yeah. problem at all. The transition that's, was, that's, was that's fine. Time. It was people yeah. finishing their games on time. And getting results and it was kind of killing it. Uh, yeah, being being the first the first tournament, he did pretty well. But my thing is, if it's a tournament and you have and you know everybody knows that you have a certain amount of time to finish in, so you know you have to play a little bit faster than you usually would. I don't know, maybe. But um, other than that, I had no real problems with it because two hours is plenty of time to get a fifteen hundred point game in. Oh heck yeah, yeah. So uh, time in between tournaments, fifteen minutes is not a lot of time either. Because if he was on time, like like two. Two hours, dice down, get your results in within five. Within ten minutes, you should have the results up, and you should be at your next table. So mm-hmm. the time the time between games is, is plenty. Um, everything else is pretty much ran very well. Which, yeah. um, and he was I, calling times out during the games, too, letting us know we had 30 minutes left, like 15 <clears throat> minutes left, or even like an hour left. And so people had that being shouted at them from yeah, the background. So, so people knew. You, you knew that that, yeah. that that time frame was coming, and you had to finish your game. So it was it was it was a good tournament. Yeah, yeah, it was. It was nice, nice, and something different for the uh, for the weekend. All right. I, anything else with uh, pros and cons with the tournament? Otherwise, I think we should move on to the next topic of the podcast. Well, I guess you guys go with your tournament etiquette during that that thing. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. You, with people oh, talking, yeah. talking when you're not playing, uh, giving advice and rules lowering when you're not playing. Uh, we had a couple, um, couple issues with that. Yeah, a couple issues yeah. with that, and 
like it's a tournament. It's supposed to be serious. I mean, like you wouldn't go to a golf tournament and start talking to the guy about to take a swing. I mean, you just don't you do that kind of thing. Loud. Yeah, yeah. You, you let the guys play. You're not in the game. If you're not in the game, you don't say anything. There's no reason. If you if if in the game you miss something, that's not for somebody else to come and tell you like, hey, dude, you missed a you missed a movement here. You missed a shot here. You didn't get this objective. That's not for you to say. Yeah. If you miss it, you miss it. Yeah. I mean, it is a tournament, like you were saying, and things like that has to be a lot more strict. I mean, if you're doing, like, campaigns and league games or fun games with your friends, I mean, who cares? But in a tournament setting like that, especially with the caliber of players that we were playing with, I mean, that's just, that's a big no-no. It's, yeah. uh, it's not the place of a spectator to try and influence the game in any way. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and when you attach money prizes to the end of that, that could really, that that's really bad, especially when there's money involved, because now you have guys speaking a certain way to influence it, and you might win or lose some money that way, and that's not good. No. Table talk is really not appreciated. And we had a couple people, a couple problems, but other than that, I mean, everything else is fine. Yeah, everything else is right. good. No one's. I don't think anyone had any issues like dropping models or anything. Yeah, that's another thing. People were being good with like giving enough space to to uh, models on the tables, like not knocking them over with their uh, their bellies and shirts. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's pretty surprising considering how uh, packed it was. Mm-hmm. And there was plenty like of room that. in between tables where you're not bumping butts with people. Yeah, yeah, yeah that was great. That was a good oh, job on the uh, part of Game Empire for setting up all the tables and everything to let the tournament run smoothly and comfortably for everybody. Yeah, and we didn't yeah. have to put any tables outside. Which is a good thing. That's not, it was a nice weekend. Everybody under one roof. I like it. All right. Next thing on all our right. agenda, 6th so, edition, almost here. We uh, we're gonna get, now we're getting that book in somewhere between uh, two and five weeks from now. Yeah, the end of June uh, or mid July is the anticipated release of it. With oh, yeah, forty uh, yeah, eighth edition. Mm. <laughs> eighth edition. Sorry, sixth edition. Well, yeah, it's, it's the same as eighth. Fantasy in his head. Yeah, He's gonna have like rocket it. hammer. <laughs> With uh. The starting box sets would rumored to be the Dark Angels and Chaos Space Marines. Damn right. More yeah. power armor. More awesome. power armor. And two armies that I play. So either way, whatever comes out, I'm happy. Especially so with the release of the, a, release so of the Codex. we got a big set of um, rumors for 6th edition right up here in front of us. Oh, yes, we do. Most oh, of yes, these are do. on, uh, we've got on pretty good authority, but overall we just collected them from the various... Sources. Reasonable places to get them on the internet. We don't have any secret secret sources or anything. We got this stuff. Same place. Anybody else searching the internet's going to find it. Yep. So, uh, what do you guys think about um, pre measuring? Which basically everybody is saying there's going to be in the game. I think I like it. I, I, like I think it. that'll take away a lot of a lot of guesswork and a lot of tactical advantage for stuff too. Because then you wouldn't if you pre measure, you know you're not in or you're out of a charge range, and that takes away. Yeah. Like the uncertainty of what you're gonna do. Like if you move this way, you chance of missing a charge, and then you get shot at next turn. If you take that away, then it's more like okay, I just move here. It's more like really chess with dice, and it's not as fun. Yeah, at least with pre measuring, it'll make it consistent, so people aren't getting called out on it and things like that. So I mean, if you're allowed to pre measure, you can pre measure anything. I mean, yeah. it'll change the tactics differently. It'll make the tactics different, but if it's consistent, I mean, I'm okay with it. I think my favorite part about pre-measuring is it's really going to cut down on the uh, seven to eight inch movement phases for that tax squad. If you know what I mean, yeah. You can check twelve D&D. inches before the start of your turn, and you know you're out of charge range. There's no way they're going to be able to charge you that turn. So yeah. I really like that. It's going to cut down on a lot of that extra movement, whether it's intentional or not. Yeah, yeah it's the, like that, and you can actually use the room of battle boards without having to worry about people using that for pre-measure. That's oh, yeah, true, too, because I've been wanting to play on those for a while. I mean, they are beautiful boards and stuff like that, but with how they're configured, I mean, they're 2 by 2 so if you look at them long enough, you'll be able to judge. You're like, okay, I can make that charge because I know if I'm like in the middle of the board, I'm 12 inches away from the center and all the other little other random variables. Yeah, and another thing with the pre-measuring thing, and then there's another rumor of, of random 
charges. So I guess the random or the pre-measuring wouldn't be that big of a deal if there's random charge ranges. That's true. Yeah, because this you'll know. Okay, I failed it. There you go. Yeah, and it's more. Yeah, it, 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 it'll yeah, more be more like fantasy, which is I don't know. If you want to play fantasy, play fantasy. I don't think it'd be belongs in 40k. That's just my opinion. But I it mean, could be a fun thing. Of, speaking of being more like fantasy, I mean challenges in 40k. Oh. Yeah, that one I'm not too keen on because I mean there are characters that are close combat beasts, but there are other characters that are just made just for shooting, and then there's just the strategic commanders too. So being yeah. able to challenge and then saying like, well, I don't want him to fight, so he can't contribute to the fight at all. That doesn't make any sense to me. And yeah. likewise, it it doesn't make any sense that uh, Tyranid would give any kind of shit about what that space marine over there is yelling at him. He just <laughs> wants to eat what's in front of him. Yeah, and then you kind of get into issues where people are char- challenging, and there's no way you could win. Like if the swarm lord comes in and he challenges your space marine sergeant, how are you going to win that combat? Well, no. If, in that case, you can just say, I, "I don't accept a challenge." Now your swarm lord can't attack either, and you wipe him out. No, then no. Your your character wouldn't be no, able to fight, no. but the swarm lord would just eat up your tactical squad. The swarm lord gets to fight, but the guy who refuses the challenge doesn't. So what happens there is you'll lose your power fist. Well, then there. That's that's. Well, that's yeah. a smart way to get rid of the power fist, then. Bring it on, yeah, power fist. I'll take you on. Then there's no it, way you could win. There's no yeah, way you can win. Yeah, there's no way you can win. Because based on how the rumors are set up, if you lose the challenge, you lose the combat. Or if you discard the challenge in that same situation, you guys get you and they can't do anything back to the swarm yeah, lord. You still lose. So it's a lose lose. Look at what you guys are comparing a swarm lord versus a tactical marine squad. I don't think they're going to win anyway. Okay, well, if you take, well, if you had the power fist in there, you know, at least you have a fighting chance. But if you don't have that in there, you have you'll do, zero chance. You'll do two wins with that swarm lord, and he'll eat up four dudes minimum. Right. right, but what if the swarm lord only had one wound left? Then he probably well, has. Well, I don't know. There's lots of situations where that one power fist could really be important, and just being able for the swarm, the tyranid player in this case, to call it out, just to say, "No, you won't do that to me." Is is just well, really doesn't. Isn't challenged for ICs or whatever you want to call it, like HQ type characters anyway? Like a sergeant shouldn't or may not be able to do challenges. Well, if, if it's the way it works in fantasy, any champion which would be the sergeant equivalent could take that challenge. I so, the, so the sergeant would be one of those guys you could challenge. Well, actually, well, if taking a look at the rumors right now, it says only independent characters can challenge other independent characters. So, sergeant would not be part of that category. Well, this is this is sort of speculation. We're just trying to base it off as much as we can extrapolate from fantasy because that's the only real benchmark we have here. I mean, that is true. Yeah, and uh, uh, along, along, along with the fantasy is the uh, the percentages. Things going oh, into God. percentages. No force org, which would be really odd for forty k. Yeah, so, yeah. force org's been around for a long time. It's been around for twenty five years. I don't know if they're going to change that. Yeah, that. The no force organization is really going to mess up a lot of armies. Yeah, a lot of armies will get gimped by it, and then a lot of other armies might get like super boosted out of it. It would be. Just imagine if you get a certain percentage of points into an HQ, and somebody like a Space Wolf player who gets two HQs for one slot. Now you're taking six Rune Priests with Jaws and different whatever. Who cares about what the other psychic power is? You got Jaws and Murder's Hurricane flying around everywhere. You got six of those guys. Yeah, and then since there's no cap That's on your troops, and troops can be technically almost unlimited, anybody with good troop choices can take multiple, multiple copies of troops. I mean, imagine what, playing against a Grey Knight list with an Inquisitor and all the little... Jacaros. Jacaros yeah. running around. Or, uh, you could literally have an entire army of Jacaros. Or even a Dark Eldar player who's now got 15 Venoms filled with three-man rack units that are all troop choices. Yeah, oh, God. It, that, that, would, really that would completely break the game. Yeah, the big, the big problem I have with it is less that allowing people to do crazy stuff, and more that it can nerf some armies right now. Like I'm a big Tau guy, and if you're suddenly telling me I can't spend more than 500 points on broadsides, there's no reason to play Tau anymore. Yeah, yeah. but at the at the same time, in the fantasy book. It also says that you can't take two, more than two of the same choice at a certain point level. So, like, a thousand points, you can't take more than, say, two tactical squads or two guys inside of Venoms. And you have to change it up somehow. Unless you go well, to a bigger points level to I where it, 
you know, I don't really change. trust them when they say, you know, change it up somehow, because change it up somehow turns into